Today we're going to talk about how to perform a cylinder power balance test. I've got a 2003 Chevy Venture van, the V6. Uh, this van does have a known blown head gasket. Um, there is a possibility that we can use the cylinder power balance test to determine which cylinders may have the issue. But uh, in general, we're just performing this so that I can show you how to do a power balance test. Okay. I'm using this vehicle because it's kind of nice. I can utilize a scan tool in order to perform the power balance test. I don't have to get dirty underneath the hood. I do everything right in the driver's seat. So first thing we do, our first step is we fire up the engine and we get it up to operating temperature. I want to perform this test when our vehicle is in closed loop status. So we want to be above about 140 degrees Fahrenheit coolant temp. So once we're up at temperature, we're going to go ahead and hook up our scan tool. So we got our scanner. We'll go through it real quick. So I got a Chevy. I got the VIN code here next to me so I can easily go through and reference it. We got a 2003 Chevy. And we got Venture Van extended. Perfect. All right, once we're connected, once our scan tool is connected, the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the engine, okay? So we're gonna select the engine right here. Okay, it's asking us if we have our cable connected, we do. All right, we got data display, codes, menu, functional test, generic functions, and troubleshooters. For a cylinder power balance test, I want to be able to disable the fuel injectors, okay? The purpose of this test is what we're going to do is we're going to actually kill cylinders. And when I kill a cylinder, I'm going to watch how far does the RPM drop down, okay? And when I see that RPM drop, I'm going to make note of that. And then I'm going to turn the cylinder back on, and then it should go right back up to idle. And the idea is, if the engine's running perfectly fine, the cylinder, all cylinders will drop the exact same amount of RPM. That means they're all contributing the same amount of potential power to the four-stroke cycle of the engine. Okay? So that's what we're determining here. So what I want to do is go to functional tests. Again, I'm using the scan tool to try to disable injectors. I'm going to go through here, and if I take a look, I have injector balance. I don't want that. Okay, that's for a different test. I want output controls down below. All right, using the output controls, I'm going to scroll down here until I can find the injectors that I can disable. So right there, I got injector number one disabled. Yes, no, two, three, four, and then six. Five's in there somewhere. Oh, there it is, up on top. All right, so I'm gonna select injector number one. We're at operating temperature. Okay. All right, so I got my scan tool set up so that I can see my RPM and my RPM only. That's all I need to see. Down here I have our min and max values, so I'm going to leave it alone, but I'm going to concentrate on these numbers right down here. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see. All right, so what I want to do is I want to disable the injector. I'm going to watch. Right now, I'm right around 700 RPM. Disable injector. Go yes. Monitor down here. RPM drops. and turn the injector back on. Okay. So if I take a look, right here my drop is 582 to 832 RPMs. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write that down.
All right. So that's what it looks like when I fell out the information for cylinder number one. My RPM dropped down to 582 and picked back up to 832 when I turned it back on. I'm going to perform this for all my cylinders. So I'm going to go back out, go to the next injector. There's my RPM data. Kill the injector. Give it a minute. And then turn it back on. My RPM drop on cylinder number two was 626 to 798. So we're to back up. Next cylinder. Go ahead and disable it. See our RPM drop. Turn the injector back on. 574 to 785. Now what you'll notice is once that RPM drops, it tends to pick right back up again. Because we have electronic fuel injection, the idle air control motor is actually trying to compensate. And all the other cylinders are going to kind of take up the slack. So it's nice to pull up the RPM data because it shows you the high, the peak and the low. And then you can just record off of those too. So it takes a quick shot of it. You've got it. And then you can subtract all those values later. So we'll go back. Keep going. So now we're on cylinder number four. I'm going to go ahead and give this one. Disable. Alright, back on. I don't know if you can tell with the camera, but every time we turn and kill an injector, the whole entire vehicle starts to vibrate like crazy because we're creating this misfire. Alright, so my low is 612 to 767. Two more cylinders to go. Five hundred and seven, seven hundred and sixty two. Alright, and we got 545 to 765. Alright, that was all six of our cylinders. So I'm going to back out. It's a good idea to let the engine run for just a little bit to try to clear itself. But remember, we were, disconnect we were disabling the injectors. So no raw fuel is going into the catalytic converter. The spark plugs were firing, but it's not a big deal because there's no fuel inside of the system. So that's perfectly fine. So that's the best way to perform this test.
Now there's a couple other ways if you don't have this option and I'll try to cover those a little bit later. Once our scan tool is done communicating, we're back at the selection mode. We can go ahead and turn our scan tool off. And turn off our car. Alright, next we're going to do a little bit of math and we're going to figure out if our cylinders are within reason. Alright, so we take a look and these are our readings right here that we got from our cylinder power balance on that Chevy Venture. What I did is I took the largest reading here and I subtracted it from the lowest reading here and then it gave me a difference of 250 uh, remember this is in an RPM, so revolutions per minute so I went ahead and I did that for all six cylinders the next thing we want to do is we want to take the largest dropping cylinder okay, which is cylinder number five at 255 RPMs that's how much it dropped we want to subtract that from our lowest performing cylinder which is cylinder number four at 155 uh, RPMs. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to subtract those two. So we'll take 255. We'll subtract it from 155, which gives us a difference of 100 RPM. Okay? That right there is no good. Okay? So this is bad. On average, uh, you should only see 50 RPM drop. So we want to see less than 50. So oops, oops, if I can spell. 50 is our acceptable drop. Okay, 50 RPMs. So, like I said earlier in this video, that, that Venture van that we're messing around with, it's got a head gasket problem where it's burning through some coolant. So, it's quite possible that cylinder number four is the cylinder that's leaking coolant. So, that's definitely going to contribute to a fact that it only dropped down 155 RPMs, which means it's not contributing a lot of power to the entire engine, to all the uh, according to all the other cylinders. And if we were to take a look, the cylinders that are the lowest performing is cylinder number four and cylinder number two. Number two is at 172 RPMs, and then four is at 155. So this is roughly right around 80, okay, 80 RPM drop. But everything else is pretty much within range. We got 255, uh, 220 RPMs, 211, 250. So four out of the six cylinders are okay. But unfortunately, that's not acceptable for a properly running engine. So we want to make sure we want to make sure that we do something about that cylinder number two and cylinder number four. So we'll have to perform some other tests to determine 100 percent what is the root cause. A good thing to follow this up with would be a cylinder leak down test, or you can do a compression test. But a cylinder leak down test will probably give you a little bit more of an accurate description of where everything's going, especially if it's a head gasket, because you'd probably see bubbling coming out of the radiator uh, at that point. So. So, good test to kind of lead you in the direction of what cylinders to check. Um, so now you just have to do a little bit more in-depth work to find out why we're getting these low numbers in these two cylinders. Okay? And don't be afraid, always double check too. So when you're performing a cylinder power balance test, if you get a lot of good numbers like towards the end, but in the beginning they're not that great, go back through and do those first couple of cylinders again just to double check to make sure that your numbers are what they're supposed to be. Okay, doesn't hurt. All right, double check to verify and then go through some further tests. So remember, we don't want to have any drop uh, above, uh, any difference above 50 RPMs. Okay, so we want to stay within 50 RPMs all, all of our cylinders. Okay, that should be our acceptable drop. All right, so this is how to perform a cylinder power balance test. Thanks for watching.